To this, the annual Father Pedro Arupe Award, given each year by the University of Scranton for distinguished contributions to Ignatian mission and Ignatian ministry. Um, we're very glad that there's so many of you here today and that we had to bring out more chairs. That's a great thing. This year, we welcome to our campus Father Dean Brackley of the Society of Jesus, Professor of Theology and Ethics at Central American University in San Salvador, El Salvador. Father Brackley once wrote in a great book, The Call to Discernment in Troubled Times, he wrote of St. Ignatius of Loyola, that Ignatius discovered that his gifts benefited others, that his passion became and his passion always remained to help steward the flame of love that God had lit within them the better to serve the world around them. Father Dean, we are grateful for your presence here today, for all that you have done and continue to do in the spirit of our founder, Holy Father, St. Ignatius. For you, by your gifts, you tend that flame within us, stirring the fire in others. And so you are most welcome here today to our community, the University of Scranton. And with that, I'd like to invite Father Thomas Roach of the Society of Jesus, rector of the Jesuit community at Scranton, to lead us in prayer. Thank you. God, creator and father, you have endowed each one of us with marvelous gifts of body, intellect, and spirit. And in your loving providence, you bring to fruition within us the desire to share with our brothers and sisters everything we ourselves have received from you. Today, we honor a Jesuit priest and educator who responded wholeheartedly to your call to go to serve the people of El Salvador in a time of great need. As we gather for this ceremony, we ask that it may be an occasion for us to hear once again your call to hearken to the cry of the poor and to go to them, each in our own way. We thank you for inviting us to be instruments of your justice and your peace, to be your presence wherever we live and labor. Please bless the people of El Salvador and the bonds we have with them. Please give us the firm faith conviction that your kingdom will surely come, just as your son Jesus prayed that it would. It is in his name that we offer you these prayers, for he has risen from the dead and walks with us all days and into eternity. Amen. Amen. And now, uh, Marie Karam, the director of the Language Learning Center, will read the citation. It would have been much easier and much safer for Dean Brackley, Society of Jesus, to mourn from afar the Jesuits killed at the Universidad Centroamericana, or the UCA, in San Salvador in 1989. He had just begun teaching theology at Fordham University, and the Bronx clearly was a second home for him. Father Brackley had spent most of the 1980s as a trainer, community organizer, and teacher for organizations of the South Bronx Catholic Vicariate. Yet his studies for a Master of Divinity had taken him to Latin America for three trimesters. He was fully aware of the spiritual and educational needs of the region's peoples. And as a scholar of ethics and liberation theology, Father Brackley knew that remembering the martyred Jesuits need not be a passive activity. Within a year of the tragedy, he made the extraordinary and difficult decision to volunteer to replace one of his fallen colleagues at the university. In the 20 years since then, Father Brackley has served as a professor of theology and philosophical ethics at the UCA. 
and for the last three years has been pastor of its university parish, Jesucristo Liberador. In addition, he administers to San Salvador's underprivileged urban communities, oversees a scholarship program for students from poor families, and collaborates on a study abroad program that brings students from 28 U.S. Jesuit colleges and universities to the UCA for a semester. Unsurprisingly, Father Brackley is a passionate advocate for the people he serves. Through lectures, presentations, and publications, he spreads the message of El Salvador's difficulties and what must be done to ameliorate them throughout the world. His books include The Call to Discernment in Troubled Times, New Perspectives on the Transformative Wisdom of Ignatius Loyola, The University and Its Martyrs, Hope from Central America, and Divine Revolution, Salvation and Liberation in Catholic Thought. And he has published numerous articles in America, Revista Latinoamericana de Teología, and Grail. As a scholar, as a teacher, as a spiritual leader, Father Brackley has done much to honor and extend the legacy of the Jesuits whose murders called him back to Central America. In ways large and small, he is helping to ensure that their deaths were not without purpose. He is a vivid example of the person for others whom Ignatius envisioned centuries ago. The University of Scranton is proud to honor the Reverend Dean Brackley, Society of Jesus, Professor of Theology and Philosophical Ethics, Jose Simeon Cañas, Universidad Centroamericana, recipient of the Pedro Arrupe Society of Jesus Award for 2010. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, all of you who are members of the community, this university community of the University of Scranton. Thank you, uh, Father Scott Pilars. Uh, your team, your administrative team, part of which is represented here, um, and who visited uh, El Salvador this January, uh, building that relationship that has been in construction now over 10 years. Thank you, Marie, for your kind words. I wonder if you have any, you suppressed any other information. I don't know where you dug up all that information on my past life. I think you suppressed some other uh, elements of my past that are, are, are best left hidden. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. Again, this is the third or fourth time that I visited uh, the university. Um, when you receive an honor like this, you know you're getting older. Um, and St. Ignatius says it's a little dangerous. Honors are a little dangerous, but I'm, I'm happy to be an excuse to have a party. Um, I'm happy to be an excuse to remind ourselves of what a wonderful person Pedro Rupe was, uh, to remind ourselves of the generous gift of our martyrs at the UCA, and to deepen our own uh, sense of identity and mission in this great enterprise, the challenge of Jesuit-inspired uh, education, higher education uh, today. I greet you um, uh, in the name of your sister university, the UCA, and my brothers in the Jesuit community there who are with me in spirit and salute you. Um, today, really, we are commemorating uh, with this award uh, 10 years of collaboration between our universities. Just this past November, uh, Rodolfo Cardinal, who was a colleague of our martyrs and my colleague, uh, uh, for many years the academic vice president of our university, uh, joined you to commemorate the 
uh, 20th anniversary of the martyrs of the UCA. But it began long ago in 1999. It was Brendan Lally, the Jesuit rector, who initiated the program Bridges to El Salvador, bringing faculty, staff, students uh, to El Salvador. Marie Karam and Lee Penyak and their colleagues have continued that legacy, um, visiting each year. For the past four years now, uh, the Scranton's International Service Program has brought student groups to work in poor communities and assist projects in El Salvador. And as I mentioned, uh, not only did Scott Pilars, my brother, and your president visit two years ago, uh, the administrative team visited uh, just recently and were just sharing with me how rich that experience was of learning about this sort of average country with all its trials and its hopes and, and wonders. Your annual award remembers Pedro Rupe, who was the Jesuit Superior General, as you know, from 1965 until 1983. He was a major force for Jesuit renewal, but also for the wider church renewal after the Second Vatican Council. And like the martyrs of the UCA, he inspires us in our mission of higher education. Like the martyrs of the UCA, he was shaped by his times. And we remember him because he inspires us with his creative generosity to respond to our times. People used to talk about his infectious enthusiasm, his visionary optimism, his inner freedom. He was a fountain of goodness, an inspiring collegial leader. The source of this goodness in Arupe, this contagion, was the God in whom Pedro Arupe placed his life, his hands. He placed his life in God's hands. Pedro was a man of deep prayer and deep devotion to the Eucharist. He was enthralled with Christ. And as Jesus' companion, he was a man of the church, the frail and human church, where he drew deep from the living waters of the spirit. Pedro Rupe was shaped by suffering, and in particular by uh, the Holocaust of the atomic incineration at Hiroshima. He was the novice master outside Hiroshima, and as uh, a medical student, uh, attended to the survivors. This experience deepened in him his appreciation of evil in the world today and also his profound empathy for those who suffer. So it's small wonder that as the superior general of the society, he drew our attention to the crucial signs of our times, the poor and how they are victims of massive structural injustice, to hungry children, to victims of war, to the growing masses of migrants and refugees in an unequal world. He helped the church move toward that vocation that John the 23rd had held out as the ideal, a church of the poor. And uh, as he presided over the Jesuits 32nd general congregation, as you know, he helped move the Society of Jesus to embrace as its mission the service of faith and the promotion of justice which that faith requires. Those of us who work in institutions like this one are all in his debt. His major statement on education, men and women for others, has given us our direction and even our motto. Here's what he wrote in that statement. Today, our prime educational objective must be to form men and women for others, men and women who will live not for themselves, but for God and for Christ, men and women who cannot even conceive of love of God, which does not include love for the least of their neighbors, men and women completely convinced that love of God, which does not issue in love of others, is a farce. He was shaped by his times, and we are shaped by ours. We try in these institutions 
to form men and women to respond to our times, and we are up against it. Today, poverty kills more people each year than all those who died in World War II. Poverty kills more people each day than die from terrorism in an entire year. War drags on in Afghanistan, Afghanistan and Iraq. Over five million people have died in Central Africa's recent wars, mostly from sickness and hunger, and mostly unnoticed by the world. Today, over 150 governments practice torture. Our environment is in crisis. Millions of abortions performed each year. Our US prison system, the largest in the world, 2.3 million people, houses mostly black and brown men from small, poor communities. We live in a world where thousands flee poverty and hundreds die crossing the desert in the Southwest each year. In our schools, we need to learn these facts and respond to them. But to respond to them, we need to learn more than facts. In the Jesuit tradition, we understand that we cannot form the head unless we form the heart as well. Growing in moral sensitivity and practical reasoning and judgment for us is essential to academic excellence. Education includes learning how to size up what is at stake morally in situations and learning how to respond appropriately. We do not separate facts and values, intelligence and morals, as though values and moral commitments were ultimately matters of taste and not of reason. Reason for us is more than the analytical rationality of the natural sciences. We who want to educate minds and hearts do not line up head and facts on one side as academic excellence and heart and values on the other. We strive to educate the whole person. We want students not just to be successful professionals, but successful human beings. Education is not just information, it is formation for wisdom. And all this means that traveling to El Salvador, community-based learning, internships, clinical partnerships, all those forms of engaging people unlike us, especially poor people, are integral to our quest for academic excellence. They are not frills. They should give rise to unasked questions. They should erode our prejudices. They should expand our horizons. This is what we strive to do. Now, you asked me to say a word about what we do in El Salvador, and with this, I will close. At our university, just like you, we are striving to live up to our ideals. It's important you realize that we're trying to do this just as you are. And we partly do it, and we partly miss it. But we do this in a context that is characterized by gross inequalities and injustice, and blessed by enormous faith and solidarity. In our context, it is necessary, of course, to form men and women for others. But we have to do more than that, and so we practice what we call social projection. These are all the means that our university uses to share knowledge with the wider public that cannot attend our university. People who are too poor and too ill-served even to finish secondary education. We feel that we have to address their needs. It's not enough to just to, just to, to, uh, to teach our mostly middle class students. And so um, we try to unmask the lies that uphold this status quo, to denounce abuses, to analyze policies, and to make constructive proposals. This is what the UCA martyrs were killed for in 1989. In the last two years, to give you some examples, our Human Rights Institute has conducted two public tribunals of restorative justice, allowing survivors of massacres and torture to have their say. This for the first time since our war in, 19, in the 1980s. Our radio station, which broadcast their testimony, 
serves as an alter alternative voice inspired by human and Christian values in a culture of the media that is dominated by the rich and powerful. The pastoral center of the UCA tries to hand on the legacy of our martyrs and of a faith committed to the liberation of the poor. Our university parish masses, where we examine the national reality in the light of God's word, are broadcast around the country. Our teachers fan out to help form and educate high school teachers in small communities. Our business administration students advise poor communities in running and designing uh, economic development projects. Two extension programs serve remote communities ravaged by war. Public forums and appearances in the media by our professors and administrators open spaces to examine national problems. All of this engagement with our suffering neighbors, with the wider social reality, is the legacy that the martyrs has given us, and it keeps us grounded. Our martyred rector, Ignacio Eucuria, a great admirer of Pedro Rupe, saw the need for the Christian University to offer proposals, creatively imagined proposals, for a more humane way to live together. He called for us to live and construct, live in and construct a civilization of evangelical poverty to replace the present civilization of wealth. He called for a civilization based on human labor and work rather than a civilization based on capital. He dreamed of a new economic order, a new social order, a new political order, a new cultural order, a new way of being church, the church of the poor. He insisted that this could only happen if there were new human beings. The problems that we face in El Salvador that I mentioned are not national problems, but transnational. And if the problems are international, so too the solutions must be. If things don't change here in the North, it will be difficult to find solutions in the South to the poverty, the spreading violence, the environmental crisis that we suffer. And so we also depend on new human beings here in the US. We need well-trained people in places like this, motivated by compassion, who can globalize solidarity. Where will they come from? We're counting on them coming from places like the University of Scranton. I'm inspired today learning more about what you do. And my brothers and sisters in El Salvador, my brothers of the Jesuit community, our community at the UCA, thank you for this award, and we are encouraged, and we want to encourage you to continue uh, to form men and women for others, inspired by the legacy of Pedro Rupe. Thank you. First, I certainly want to extend my incredible gratitude to Dean Brackley for joining us. This is a great and important and pivotal moment in the life of the University of Scranton. All year, we've been commemorating the UCA martyrs, and that celebration comes to its culmination today. And I'm tremendously grateful to Dean for being here and for sharing with us a rallying cry a reminiscence of Father Arupe, and a challenge for us to reimagine always what the University of Scranton can be for the church and the world. When we were in El Salvador in January, we had the privilege of meeting with one of Dean's colleagues, John Sabrino. And at the conclusion of his conversation with us, one of my colleagues said to John, well, what should we do when we go back to Scranton? He said, without missing a beat, Go back and turn everything upside down, not just all at once. Today is a step in turning things upside down at the University of Scranton. When we hear from Dean about the example that the UCA provides for all of us, the example that he is for all of us, we are inspired to re-engage who we are 
as a Jesuit and Catholic university. When I first asked Dean to consider allowing Scranton to honor him, you won't be surprised to know that he said absolutely not. As he mentioned, St. Ignatius was always a little wary of honors. Once, however, I mentioned that the award was named for Father Arupe, he agreed immediately to accept. That gives you a sense of the affection for which most Jesuits have for Father Arupe. And Dean beautifully described Father Arupe's life and legacy here today. And for that, I'm grateful. I just returned from four days in Mexico City at a meeting of Jesuit University presidents from around the world. Dr. Bailey was with me. And at that meeting, we heard our current Superior General challenge us to three things. First, in the face of what he called the globalization of superficiality, he challenged us to find new and more effective ways to engage and deepen the imaginations of our students. He called us to a new humanism. Secondly, he called us to a greater sense of universality with Jesuit institutions of higher education around the world. He pushed us to get beyond what he described as a vague family resemblance among our schools. And finally, he asked us to consider how we participate in what Jesuits call learned ministries. Go home, he said, and ask your faculty and ask your students, what kind of knowledge do you produce and who benefits from it? I think in Dean's talk today, he underscored that message of Father General for us to re-examine who we are in light of our mission and especially in light of our deep and abiding ties with the people of El Salvador and the campus of the University of Central America. So I thank him for that. I thank you, too. After Father General's talk in Mexico City, we had mass. Mass was in Spanish. I'm embarrassed to admit that I don't speak or understand much Spanish. So while mass was going on, I took the occasion to engage in what Ignatius in the Exercises calls a contemplation of place. And through my imagination, I tried to put myself back here and pray about all the ways in which the people of this community are accomplishing the work that Ignatius and Pedro Arupe dreamed that we would accomplish together. And so many of the faces of the people in this room were part of me during that prayer. I am so grateful to the people gathered here who day in and day out, year after year, live out the mission of this great Catholic and Jesuit university. God bless you. God bless Catholic and Jesuit education, and God bless the University of Scranton. Now let me introduce Elise Gower to give us our benediction. Let us pray. Loving and compassionate God, may your life-giving presence fill us with the grace to be your disciples. Enliven in our hearts your fervent love and transforming conviction that empowers change. Bless us with patience, determination, and humility as we seek justice and wholeness. Deepen our faith so that we may see you in all of life. May we continue to build relationships that recognize human dignity and tear down the oppressive walls of injustice. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world who struggle to find a place where their voice is heard. Awaken in us the courage to respond. We ask your blessing today on the people of El Salvador. We pray for Father Dean Brackley and all who live their lives in solidarity with others. May we go forth with open hearts, inspired to do your will. For your greater glory, we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Everyone is now invited to lunch, which will take place in this sectioned off area, Ballroom C. Thank you.